Hey y'all, hopefully you can hear me. How are you? My name is Candon Webb. I am an author. I am a holistic purity coach and um, I'm just a girl who loves God, like for real, you know what I mean? And so we're here on the live and um, I want to welcome y'all in. Please share with a friend, tell them hop on this. When I tell you, when I tell you, this is about to be an amazing conversation. So I want you guys to be able to um, ask questions. Um, I, I want you to be able to engage with us because whew, I was not ready. I was not ready for what I thought marriage meant. And uh, really, yeah, I, I think I think I had to reevaluate <laughs> ever since. Ever since um, learning about uh, Brother Ajin, this this book that he got, so we're gonna we're gonna get started. Um, do me a favor and invite somebody to the live. Um, just share the link with them. Share, and um, I see Ashley. Hey Ashley. Hey sis. How are you? Just give some shout outs for those of you guys who pop up in the comments. You can also text your um, questions for those of you guys who are members to us, the special members hotline. I'm going to take the members questions first. OK, so basically what I do is I help Christian singles live in abundance um, through uh, the different avenues. A lot of times um, we are going through the motions of being like these church kids, but there's not specifics to how we strategize in life in order to reach this abundance that we talk so much about, um, this godly life that's supposed to be fulfilling and fun. And so I like to ask the hard questions, okay? That's what I like to do on your behalf. Hey, Martin, I see you. Shout out to you, bro. Um, so yeah, you guys, we're gonna have a really great uh, conversation I'm excited to just jump right into it. So I'm not going to beat around the bush. All right. One thing I do want to just really quickly um, say uh, is that for those of you guys who are desiring marriage, if you got a friend that's desiring marriage, like tell them to get in here now. Right. So many times we are like, oh, I want to find my partner. I want to find my partner. But we don't really invest the time into understanding what that means. So that is why. I wanted my brother in Christ, um, Lawrence Aja, to come on and kind of speak to you. This brother has been in so many conversations that are noteworthy. He's been featured in so many famous um, avenues and magazines. And so really, really awesome, smart, driven um, brother. I was able to meet him during the Relationship Essentials conference that we did last year. And um, we got along pretty instantly. I feel like I feel like we're kind of similar in some of the th some of the ways that we think. And so um, but he he challenges me in a way to where I'm like, all right, I need to regroup. <laughs> Y'all about to see what I'm talking about when we start talking about this book. <laughs> so, um, so I wanted him to come on and just hang out with you guys. And shout out to all my elite members, you guys. I see you. I see you. Um, I appreciate you guys because we're we're actually opening up our secret session to you. This is the information that we get weekly in private sessions, but I wanted to open it up to you guys to get this wisdom too. And we're in a series of family planning. Um, and so I'm gonna bring him on. Questions. Um, uh, I have questions, okay, that needs to be answered. Okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and add him on. You guys put some claps and some dance emojis and some hearts in the um to show love to our brother in the, the comments as we welcome him. Um, brother Lawrence Aja to the stage. How you doing? <laughs> Good evening. What's going on, sis? Um, I'm so grateful to speak with you. And uh, this is a long time coming and I'm thankful uh, that we get to talk. So thank you so much for allowing me to be um, and share with uh, your, your trusted community. I'm, I'm grateful. Of course. I'm happy to have you on here because I've been waiting to ask you some questions about this book. <laughs> I saw this. I've seen this book. <laughs> I know I'm crazy, but I've seen this book everywhere. Um, if you guys don't know, this book, like, you so okay let me let me just give you a little bit of, of a backstory i did not when i first met brother Aja, i did not know he had a book and then i heard about it later because i follow him on social media and i saw this book and i was like okay that looks intriguing cool and then i was like okay let me try to get the book and then the investment um 
was nice. It was about two two meals that I would pay at a restaurant, and I got the book, y'all. Because I was at, at first, I was like, I don't know, this investment is kind of what I'm not used to for a book. Listen, you cannot afford not to get this this book. When I got it at the house, Brother Lawrence, <laughs> I was like, okay, let me see, <laughs> let me see what's in here. Um, and there's literally everything. Like all of the details, I love the details that you included with um, the things that we don't really think about typically when we are thinking about marriage, when we're thinking about a partner, we're thinking about the sexy stuff. <laughs> we're thinking about how they look, what they're going to do for us, the fact that we don't got to be lonely no more. So give us like the inside, um, an inside look into the process of how did you, how did you come up with your book? The hundred marriage declarations, decisions you need to make before getting married. How did you even? How did the book even come about? Yeah, again, thank you again for allowing me to share. I'm going to jump into it and try to maximize as much time as possible. I, I first, I just want to affirm everybody, uh, particularly um, those who are single, um, on the call. And I think, unfortunately, um, a lot of times we don't speak about it like it's food, but I think we were made for relationship. Uh, we truly were. And I think a part of the fall is the disconnection that we have in our community and why marriages are not happening. And so I want to affirm you in that if somebody came hungry to church, you wouldn't say, you know, well, the word could feed you. We would feed them. And so if somebody's seeking relationship, um, you know, for their life that God had called them to it. But in, in, in spite of but, but in the face of a fallen world, they're having issues. I just want to affirm you in that uh, because I understand what that feels like. I think very early in my life, I saw the power of marriage with my parents uh, that came to this country in the late 70s. They didn't have anybody. And I saw them navigate so many seasons. They were young, 23, 19. They had my oldest sister, I have three sisters. And I saw the power and their view of it. It was like an act of worship. Um, it was an act of worship, right, to be in a marriage. And then what was also interesting was that a lot of the things when I got later and I went to college, a lot of the things that when we started talking about relationships, I realized that a lot of the things that I came up seeing was not common. Right. There was a structure. Mm -hmm. There was understanding. There were clear expectations. I know what my mom did. I know what my dad did. And I'm not just talking about division of labor. There was clarity around our house, how it ran pr practically and what the marriage meant and how we did things. When I wanted to talk and make a decision or go somewhere who I spoke to first, there was alignment. And so I think as I got later in life, one of the things that I realized, I'm a problem solver. I was a consultant after uh, uh, doing track and field full time. You're, you're trained and paid to be a problem solver. And on the flip side, I found myself traveling the world, focused on bringing people together through relationship um, in terms of like community, people not being lonely. And then when I started having more and more conversations uh, around relationships, one of the things that was common, even when I got on the other side of ministry, was just that people got like the flowery, abstract, spiritual, you know, biblical things, but like they didn't understand the practical reality of what it means like to actually be married. <laughs> And so, you know, I think for me, I think problem solving, I can't help but um, feel like I got to figure out something. And I realized that most of the, the people that I saw, even when I got into the marital counseling, it was like misaligned expectation. They were arguing about things that they should have talked about a long time ago. It, you know, mm -hmm. it was kind of like, OK, wait, y'all talk, y'all talking about having kids. You didn't talk about whether or not you wanted to have kids. I didn't discuss that before y'all got didn't discuss that. You discuss about how you wanted to manage the house. How long did you, did your wife want to stay home? Did, did you want to have her stay home? Does she want to work? Does she not want to work? As a husband, how are you managing the finance? Are you managing the finance? Are you? There's basic things that you're arguing about to say these are table stakes. Mm. You know, when I saw my parents, we knew how the money worked. <laughs> when they were younger, we heard them argue about things, but they were aligned about a goal. And so I think part of the, the genesis was because I saw that it's almost like friendship particularly when we came out the pandemic, where you have people who had broken friendships. not And I think for most of the time, it's not because people weren't willing. They just didn't know that that was the expectation you had of them in that time. Similarly, I think there's a generation of us who generally desire relationship and actually get into them sometimes. But they, we struggle not because of a lack of a heart to have it and do it well, but because no one has given us the clear expectations of what it looks like. Right. I think your your wife or your husband would do that if they knew that was your expectation, your your boyfriend or girlfriend. So I'll say that to say the Genesis was trying to be a part of the problem solving contribution to the generation and not be talking at each other, but say, what could we do to prepare ourselves in a practical way? 
Yeah, that's really, really good. And I think it's so needed. I mean, we're looking at a, a huge divorce rate that is half of everyone who gets married. And it's like, we have to figure out a way to have successful relationships. Uh, a life commit, a lifetime commitment is not something that we should fail at regularly, right? And so I love the fact that you put the details in this book. And I just want to read just just one. Um, now, listen, guys. When I when I got the book and I read the introduction, first of all, I I like people who are stimulating and intellectual thinkers and talkers because we have the aspect of theology, which I love, right? But a lot of times I find that we're not digging into all of the holistic elements and the details of what these different scriptures and things mean. That's why I love, I love Brother Lawrence because he does that. So I'm gonna read you just like one sentence that I really love in the introduction. Um, one part that I really love that you said, you said no team or healthy human endeavor undertaken amongst or between human beings exists or thrives without intentional and practical clarity around not only its ultimate goal and purpose, but also its major functions and operations. And one of the reasons why I really appreciate this body of work that you um, completed is because it's very defined, as in like, it's almost like um, legal, like terms and um, very, and that clarity lends itself to like, this is not something light. This is a sacred institution. This is a commitment that you're making to another person, not a concept that you have in your mind. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I love that. And also this is why I say we're life minded because I always say this. I always say the goal is not to get married. It's to stay married. And when I got the book, <laughs> I literally read that in the book. And I jumped up and down. This is my whole brother. We might have come mm -hmm. from a similar womb. And so I love, but the, here's what you add. That's um, so enlightening to me, you say this, you say, because the goal is not simply to get married, it is to stay married. Because what good would the cross be if Jesus did not stay? And just snatched immediately. Likewise, what good would marriage be to you, your neighbor and or God, if you were not prepared to stay too? Yikes. Because when we get to a point where the thing doesn't serve us anymore, where it's actually like sacrifice of getting on the cross, that's when we're like, we're done, right? So I really appreciate that um, you're able to kind of lend that perspective in this book. And I almost feel like I'm I'm going to petition to get like a second edition where I get, <laughs> where I can just like pick your brain about these things. But I think one of the beautiful things about it is we get a realistic perspective that's still beautiful from the things that you say in this book and the declarations and the models and the input um, that we ourselves have to agree to. And so I do want to kind of visit um, in this one thing um, in the back, just to, so you guys know, those of you guys who are gonna get the book and I highly recommend that you get it, okay? It's less than a therapy session and you are gonna need it, your entire marriage, okay? Um, I think the beautiful thing is that in the back, you kind of commit to everything that you have stated. And to me, it kind of mirrored this picture of like the Garden of Eden, right? Mm. Where like, this is the ultimate statement. And I love this because without that ultimate statement, you can always come back to the seat of blame, right? You could always say, well, you didn't, husband. <laughs> And you didn't wipe, and this woman you gave me, right? Without that, without revisiting what you said in the beginning, without revisiting the harmony that was present when we both agreed not to eat the fruit because we knew that God told us that, right? You could get, you could fall into this like really toxic area of like blame. And I think this is why so many people get divorced. So for you personally, what was your road to marriage like? Because you have a beautiful wife. I've seen some pictures of her on social media. Sarzana. I'm, I'm, hopefully I'm saying her right, name right. Yeah? Sarzana. 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 Sarzana, right? Yeah? Mm -hmm. Shout out to her. She's amazing. And so what was your road, your personal experience like transitioning into marriage? Was there something that you felt like, okay, one, how did you know you were even ready? Mm -hmm. That's where I would like to start. Yeah. So I, I think my story was interesting in college. You know, I, like I did be president BSA student government. I was always involved in our community. And one of the jokes, even at the freshman table, you know, everybody had the black table was just like Lawrence is the marriage man. 
because I always was talking about marriage and was interesting was because, you know, I grew up with my parents being young. My parents are typically younger than most of the other parents that were there. Um, they got married very young. And I remember talking amongst my classmates at that time. And one of the things that was interesting was that they were, um, every time I talk about marriage, I'm like, I can't wait to get married. I can't wait to find my wife. They'd be like, marriage? Like, like it was almost like, like what? Thinking about marriage, even anywhere in the next 10 years in your 20s, it was almost like a gas. It was like, you don't talk. It was like, I got career. I got all these different things. And again, in a place like Harvard, where people are very ambitious, career minded, it was just this dynamic of that where I'm like, in my mind, I was, I, was, I felt really disconnected from that vibe. And so for a long time, I had that. I went into college as well, like, you know, like, hey, I'm going to maintain my purity. I'm going to maintain my virginity. I'm going to wait until I find my wife. And that was my goal. And so, again, that was also part of the conversation. Like, what? You're like, you know, this is what you're doing. And, you know, like, I think like many people, you have this goal. And then I said, I'm only going to, I'm like, I didn't believe in dating. But that was my big thing. Because I just said, hey, you find a wife. Like, I'm, I'm going to be razor sharp because some part of it was unhealthy, some part of it was healthy. The healthy part was I wanted to honor God and I didn't want to waste time. The unhealthy part was just, it was a fear because yeah. it, it was a reverent fear and some of the unhealthy fear of just, um, I've seen you know women bring down kings, you mm -hmm. know? And because of that, I just, I sensed that God had a big call on my life. And I'm like, I didn't want this to be my Achilles heel that I was on here running around. And then my life was derailed because I just didn't have any, Holy Spirit driven discipline in that area of my life. But, you know, found my, my, my first relationship. I thought I was going to marry her. You know, she was older. She was a senior at, at college. I was like, oh my gosh. And she, you know, she kind of was a little bit more liberal about that. She was just like, we're going to get married anyway. You know, we did that and work out. <laughs> and I kind of went on this journey, gone on, the, gone on a path. And I was just like, you know what? Um, I really, really care about um, finding my wife. And I think I was on a journey. I, you know, I kind of was, uh, you know, out there for a little bit. Um, and then long story short, you know, I, I think I've, I've had like three major relations in my entire life, like three major ones. And, you know, initially the person that I thought initially I was going to marry, um, you know, was my friend in college. We ended up getting engaged uh, about four years ago, um, four and a half years ago. And I thought it was it. And, you know, I was so caught up in just the biblical view of like, I've made this choice. And I still believe, quite frankly, that the choice is more about you choosing to be married than the fact that it just flows. Mm -hmm. But I saw a lot of things in the process. Um, I think one, the conversations that I thought we had, but we did not have, right? The things that you thought you're like, because we're both believed in Christ. We both were Christians. It was both, but like the things, the detail of those things were not clear. I think two, I also saw the other side of it in terms of just like, you know, having good counsel and then having what I would say is not optimal counsel. And that mm -hmm. part of it was even part of my even desire to want to be in um, marriage counseling because I just felt that, you know, there was a way to do it that held both people accountable to God's standard for them. And I didn't necessarily think that was experience in that. Um, and so those are two things. And so I think going through that, it not working out, but I believe it was for the best, of course. Um, I, you know, you go through this journey of like, man, um, you know, you're disillusioned. Um, I believe it was the best thing. And I took some time to really kind of be with God. I'm like, God, I've, I've kind of saved myself as best as I could to find my wife. But I, I, I felt one, I was clear that I said, Lord, in faith, I believe that I'm, you, you know, you call me to be married. I, I have peace about that. But I also believe that there's something around this ministry of marriage that I need to contribute to because that there's a voice, there's, there's certain voices that are not speaking into this. And I think they're not of male brothers' voices speaking to it in, 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 in a theologically and practical way. And I said, I want to use some of my experience to share with people so they don't go through some of the things that I went through in my process. Um, fast forward, the, the the story about my, my wife and I is that I was invited to speak at a women's Bible study um, out of the Bay Area. There was a women's Bible study, um, a big one out of the Bay Area run by actually my, my co-admissions officer. She was my admissions officer at seminary. And has amazing sisters, professional sisters out there that get together and pray and love the Lord and study his word diligently. And they invited mm -hmm. me to speak on a um, speak twice. And after it, um, my wife, to, my current, my wife essentially reached out saying, hey, I want to bring people together in the community. Long story short, the leader was just like, you need to talk to Lawrence. He's done that around the world. We end up having a conversation on Zoom, the three of us. And again, I'm all about business, <laughs> you know, and so I'm, I'm, I'm walking through being very generous and talking through how I could be helpful. But then literally, like I felt I, I felt in faith, the Holy Spirit speak to me near the end of the conversation. It said, 
you know, at, you know, ask if you could, if she's okay. Cause she seemed very tense. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, um, she was like, Oh, you know, I'm a little, I'm stressed. Thank you for asking for that. And then it said, it just sensed that, Hey, you know, continue to get to know her. So I kept asking her questions and questions. And then we ended up praying at the end of the call. And then I fasted for a month after that, because I said, Lord, mm -hmm. something's different about her. And so I fasted for a month. And then the day after I finished my fast, she ends up sending me a text message, like <laughs> out of the blue, quote unquote, like, hey, you know, like, are you um, uh, are you in Dallas or that are in Texas? I call her immediately. We're on the phone for two and a half hours and the rest is history. Come on. OK, hold on. Let me take notes. So you yeah. went to a conference. <laughs> I need to come on. Okay, All the people, on, all the single people, I don't want. You need to um be doing the your purpose in the Lord, so then you can ask somebody for a meeting to do the thing you were created to do. Because then you may come up on your husband. Or I got it. I got all the notes. <laughs> oh, yo, it was not. It was not expected. Again, it was one of those things where again we spoke, and initially, initially, you know, she was just like when at the end of the call, I didn't. I didn't actually like, I didn't say like, Hey, I'm interested in that. I was just like my heart, my, my spirit, my Holy spirit was just on. And then uh, she was just like, well, you need to hook me up with some of your, you know, your friends, you know, such it out here. And I'm like, well, my friends are like me. And if they like me, I need to get to know you before I, I, I volley it up. And our first conversation, interestingly enough, you know, I was just like, okay, she's nice. But I was like, I'm not sure, you know, do we have the same goal? Blah, blah, blah. And then we kept talking about this. I just felt peace, mm. peace speaking to her. And we realized that we're more aligned than we thought. And then obviously I was clear. I was clear very early. Um, and uh, that and how I, early? I need the details for the people. How how I, early is early? This is just not a saying. I, I believe this really clearly in faith that uh, guys know. I think mm -hmm. God has given men the ability to know. And I was clear. And so I think early, I knew we kind of technically started, I believe, courting and then data. Like we started courting like, in may and so from may to june Ju i knew in july what two months if that I, I knew before but i just felt like i needed to confirm it so i was clear whoa whoa we got to take a pause <laughs> hold on yeah. hold on so what what was it what was it was it what was it that made you say i could live the rest of my life i want to be with this person forever was it something specific or was it a slow like just continuous peace? it was just continuous peace or what like what was the thing tell me i need to know yeah i'll say two things one of which is just that i think my understanding that you know marriage is a ch like the true choice to marry is a choice like it seems very unromantic to say it. it's a choice here's what i know no matter who you decide to be with no matter if you felt like the lord brought the, the holy spirit angels down over this person there's going to be something about that person that's going to require you to call in the name of Jesus and, and carry your cross, no matter who it is in the world. Mm -hmm. um, and so uh, because of that, I just said, OK, so that was that first part. The second part was just to your point. It was peace like this. It was an overwhelming like peace. I felt no disquietedness. I felt nothing. And I just kept following peace. And then and, and then I'll, oh, well, let me ask you this third part. She So there was confirmatory things with the peace. So she would talk about like she would have dreams. She's very locked in and like she would have dreams or someone would say something or she was just like, I had a dream that I, you know, was at my wedding and like I it was like a traditional ceremony, a Nigerian ceremony. She had that dream in January before she met me. Right. She had a dream about like someone that was in ministry. She thought she'd never be able to, someone who was in ministry and was preaching and had like a sense of humor, blah, blah, blah. And she was just like. Wow, my like my 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 aunt reminded me that that was the dream I had, and I put it in the journal, and like that's you. You're like, and so it was all these confirmatory things, or I'd be praying about her, and she'd call right then, right. And so I think those confirmatory things, in addition to the peace, in addition to the idea that I said I just got to choose, mm -hmm. like I got to choose. If I believe this is God, I got to move in faith and choose, and I got to keep choosing. And at the end of the day, that that's I think that's the path to a lifelong relationship. You choose. You don't fall into covenant. You hold it up in faith and keep choosing. You don't fall into it. You choose it. I love that so much. Um, for those of you guys watching, if anybody has Michael B. Jordan's number, I'm going to need it because I, <laughs> I might have a dream that we, anyway. Um, <laughs> no, but I love that so much. I love that you got confirmation, peace. I love that you guys were in alignment.
Now, look, I got to ask you, this is a question I have to ask you, because as I went through the declarations and the models of this book, as a single person, one, how can I use this? Because a lot of um, the uh, the things that you're declaring and the models that you're agreeing to and the decisions that you're making as you go through these carefully curated details, as a single person, now, should I start deciding this stuff and go through the book? Um, let me give you, it's just for my people who are on the call. I'm not going to give y'all too much because y'all need to go to uh, Lawrence's website and get this book yourself. But I do want to, one of, one of my favorite ones, for example, um, is I believe on page 36. It's number 29 declaration in the book. And this is the type of thing that we outline. It, is, it says, this is a declaration that you would make. We commit to not fighting or having serious arguments in front of others. Rather, we wait for time alone and away from company, either in our check-in time or immediately after to discuss things away from them. And I love that because that's wisdom, right? That's like, we don't want to, we, we, we honor the sacredness of our specific union you know, with, with us. And we, we want to be able to process together and not with a lot of other voices, right? So it's things like that. But my question is, as a single person, you know how you can get into a relationship later? I mean, you know, when I find my man or whatever. Now, I could change my mind depending on what my man want to do. So should I do this now so I can decide exactly how I feel? Because, you know, when you get in a relationship, you start saying, well, yeah, I'm good with that. But really inside, you be like, mm, -mm I don't really like that. You know what I mean? So how can I, should I do this first and then do it again with my man? Like, what, what would you recommend? So I'm going to I'm going to answer this question in three parts and this is going to be helpful for everybody no matter what stage of life that you're in. You know, you know the 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 core vision, you know, whether you're premarital or not was that two people would take this book, right? And it's not just for two people, but stay with me. Two people will take this book and they would essentially do each exercise on their own. So what I do for example with couples that I marry, I take them through this. Each of them I answer this by themselves. They do the 100 on their own. Okay. And then in the session, we work through what their answers were. And then we work through what their convictions are on it, right? And then the, the hope, for example, in the marriage is that as you work through it, you guys decide on where you're landing on each of these things. You'd sign it, commit it, and this would be in your house. Like, this is like, we committed to this, right? Mm -hmm. But the second piece is that, like, what I've found consistently, and I found even personally, is that, like, a lot of people don't know what they believe. And don't know, don't know what they, their convictions are. And then sometimes you find yourself in a marriage, in a relationship where someone is saying, I, I think we should do that. And you're like, I don't want to do that. And then they're like, why? And you don't really have a reason. And sometimes it could be the flesh. <laughs> it could be biblical. And you're like, I don't. And sometimes and out of honor to you, there's like, kind of, what do you believe? I would love to hear it. So it could challenge me or maybe rethink it. And you find a lot of brothers and sisters sometimes have never thought through these things intentionally. Mm -hmm. And so what I actually would say, go through it and be honest. Be honest about what you believe, because what I've also seen is some pump fakes, which is partly why I think this is good, because it challenges us in our integrity as Christians, right? To say God's words never wavered. So how much more his children, how much more the shadows, right, who essentially give a word and it's a reliable word. And so if I'm saying, you know what, I am committed to making sure that I follow up or I make decisions this way. My wife should know that go sleep at night saying that 10 years from now, five years from now, he ain't changing up. Right. And so what, one of the things I, I, I think I, I really, really recommend is people going through this and figuring out what they believe in view of, of many things. What I would say second is that if you're interested in somebody, this is, yo, I have not, I'm starting to put up these testimonies. So many people in the dating process have gone through this and be able to have honest conversations and be able to, to vet because a lot of people say, I feel good or this person looks good. But then quite frankly, your marriage wouldn't work. Mm -hmm. Right. And, he, and I, I got to say this piece, like I, I one of the things that I've observed in the church, and I think you remember it, whether it's in the kingdom, whether it's beyond the church, is that like there's a theological there's a theological and political divide between brothers and sisters that's growing that people don't yeah. talk about. Mm -hmm. Right. And uh, you hear complaining on either end. And so you go to the same church. You may say, I give Jesus is my Lord and Savior. I believe in marriage. But what that is measured by and what that means in day to day, practically what your marriage is completely different. And so I think this is almost like goal setting and writing out your goals and your measurable goals by this time, who, what. It's like, okay, what do I really feel? When I say I want to live a healthy life, what does that really mean? When I say that I really want to put my marriage first, what does that mean? When I say that I want to have a career, what does that mean? 
it allows you to at least have a real conversation with your, the, the person that you're interested in. Or if you're single, you can actually be clear about, you know what? Uh, I, I, I'll say this. My mother said this when she was um, 22 years old. She said, Lawrence, before I had my kids, I defined to myself what it means to be a good mother. Because she said, I knew that once I had the career, once things started moving in my humanity, I would start to choose to move the goalposts to justify what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. So she said, before I have any interest in it, I'm going to define for myself what that looks like. Similarly, I think you doing this as a single person, it allows you to be fully honest about, yo, what do I really believe? And then if I happen to come under, come into a relationship, whether I'm the, uh, I'm, I'm a wife to be, or I'm, or I'm a wife, I'm a husband, you know, I can have that wrestle. Like, is this a situation where I'm submitting onto the Lord because I believe that this leadership and this is where I'm going? Or is it, you know, this is a real big conviction for me and I'm not really rocking with this, right? So I think this is very helpful for singles to do. That, that was going to be my next question. So what if you get into the nitty gritty of the details and you know exactly what works for you, what de declaration you want to make and your partner, for example, is not on the same page? Um, what what is your suggestion? Are are you saying that as long as the couple is in alignment on these things, because these are some important things, even though they're detailed, they're pretty important. Their finances around the house, uh, roles as far as uh, what needs to be done and what the position is on that, even down to the ch children's names and how they are learning, how to teach them about sex, all of which I think is incredibly valuable and important and essential, right? And so when people do not align in some of these ways is it that they need to come into agreement or are we saying we're okay with not coming into agreement what is your thoughts on it as a person who counsels couples if you're in a if you're in a here's what i believe in faith if you're in a marriage or a relationship you 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 i believe you must come into agreement right and i believe that if you're not coming to agreement it's going to create disorder because i think these pieces are intentional Right. It's intentional things like you, somebody has you have to decide to do something. And then how could two go in the same direction if they don't agree? And I th because marriage is a picture of the oneness of God, of the Godhead, the oneness of Christ in the church. If the husband and wife are on very critical things are not on the same page, it creates disorder. Right. Um, mm -hmm. And I and I think that. And, and, and so I think the other part of it is that if you're not in agreement and you happen not to be married, that's OK. Because I think now you have a picture of we if if I'm unwilling, right? And I do think it depends on who it is in in that. If you're married, I think it depends on who it is. If you're the wife or the husband, and the model of belief, I, I do believe that God gives that authority to the husband lovingly. But at the same time, if you're married, you have already trusted that this is a husband that you're willing to follow, right? But if mm -hmm. you're not married, I think I think you should really if if it's something that you're really like, you know what? I don't want to move on this. Then I mm -hmm. think that's good. That's data. That's that's something that you should really consider. And I think my my view is that you'd probably have a healthier relationship if you come to this view of saying we're not aligned and I'm still at this place where I'm unwilling to even like come on this other side of this. Mm -hmm. I think that it's not going to work. That's good. That's good. Because uh, how can two walk together? Right. Unless they agree. And it really would sober us up when it comes to our dating lives and when we're in the stage where we're not married yet, because it's like. Why do I really like this person? Do I like them because they excite me or do I like them because there's longevity? There's there is a lot of potential for longevity in our relationship. I got an audience question. Let's pause for a second. I'm going to throw this out to the audience. The question is, do you think God chooses a wife and her husband for you or or is it you who choose 100 percent like this is my person um, and God just like is like, yeah, just choose whoever you want. I would love your impact. Throw that in the comments. Um, I talk about this quite regularly. I love to quest to ask people like, okay, do you think it's your job to go out and get a person and then you just decide whether they're your wife or your husband? Or do you think God is going to show you your person and you don't need to date? You can just wait for the Lord to show it to you. And I and, and Brother Lawrence, you gave us kind of like a, a, a inside look into um, how you kind of had like a piece and then you felt like it just kind of happened for you now before that were you actively dating or were you on a break were you like uh i'm done with this whole dating thing i'm literally working on myself where were you at when this whole thing happened for you i, I just have remained open 
Um, I, I was just remaining open. Um, I didn't, like I said, I had never really believed in dating per se, in terms of like going out and recreation, like dating, dating, dating. I, I believe, especially for me, it's like I, that that's time, that's cost. Mm -hmm. I just can't be flippantly just out here um, doing that. And I just think that even a conversation, it, it creates connection and I just need to be, you know, I think I have to be very discerning about that. But um, I would say that I, I was open for for, uh, for for a while and I was, you know, having conversations, building, whether they knew it or not, I was like getting to know people. Um, but I think even when it comes to this, I think the answer to your question is like, for me, is like, yes. <laughs> the answer to the question is yes. And here's what I mean. I think uh, God is permissible will or prescriptive will. Like God is what God sometimes, what God allows you to do things and God can prescribe things for you. And why I say yes is because God can prescribe, right? He's done that in scripture. We've seen that in Hagar. We've seen in every, he's prescribed people that he wants you, he's prescribed things he wants you to do. He can do that. It doesn't mean he always does that. And mm -hmm. I, I think, unfortunately, I think sometimes there, there's been a commercialization of the one, the one, right? Oh, wow. the, the one person, right? And, and, and I, I do believe in faith that there are people that I could have married. Right. I do believe that there are people who could have married or if I made the choice. Right. This is kind of like the mystery of God that we can't really answer of like God, like comes and intersects right where you make this choice. But um, I do think it's both and like meaning that if I have peace, I think God may be saying this is permissible. Mm. But God could burning bush me. God could give me a dream and say, this is your wife. Right. But uh, apart from that, I do think that it's almost like it's like a, you are a um, you're a boat in a large in a large in a large ocean. I could like move my boat paddles wherever I want to go. But the tide is going to take me where it's going to take me. Even the act, the fact that you even have the choice to make is something that God has ordained. Right. And so um, I, I would say that it's both. And and I, I would say that it, it would be I don't think it's biblical to believe that it's either one or the other. I think it's both. And. Mm, I love Paradoxically, that. both in. I love that so much. And I like it. I, I had a conversation with some friends of mine this uh, weekend, and we were talking about the concept of predestination and free will. And it's similar to the, the, the I like in what you just said in regards to it's both and to that same concept, because a lot of people think those things are opposing. I happen to think that those things intersect perfectly, right? Underneath the um, umbrella of predestination, you still have free will right? You can still decide, right, to whether or not you want to um, acquiesce to God's will for you. And he freely gives you that choice, but he does author a storyline for you. And so I love that you're saying that it's both, right? You receive the peace of God, you get to decide, but it's still like God will put people, position people. And I believe in divine connection. So, you know, some of us though, I know people, a lot of Christians will say, don't date, but here's the thing for the la from the lady side, guys. If you're listening to this and you're a guy, here's the thing from the women's side. Sometimes we be sitting at home in our bonnets ordering Uber Eats and we don't be going out. Who, what husband are you? What, what? <laughs> what, what? Those, 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 those. <laughs> oh, okay, can I the husband. Husband. <laughs> okay, go ahead. You, you think the husband is the Uber Eats guy? Brother Lord? No, no, no. So, so, <laughs> no, no, no. So I, I think sometimes we associate that. So let, let me hold that. I want to make sure before we moved off of what you what you just said. Um, I think we are a generation that is scared. Mm. We're, we're a traumatized generation. I think every generation has had its trauma, but I think we've wow. there's been a, a a campaign of the of the enemy to to talk about the the hell of marriage and relationships and all of these things. And yes, you hear people saying, I want a marriage, but Part of what I'm saying that part of why I'm saying that is because the reality is that we act like God hasn't already spoken to us. Wow. God speaks through his word. God has told you the, the dictates and the parameters for a, a for a, a spouse. And so you already know, like I already know what God has said for someone who does not believe uh, who's, not, who's not in Christ. He's already spoken. I already like he's already teasing, told me how to tie my shoelaces. Like he's giving me boundaries, and so sometimes we understate what God has already said. And so I think there's freedom because, and a part of the reason why we want God to do it, some part of it is that we don't want the accountability if it goes wrong. Mm. Uh, so we could say, God, you said, God, you said, the woman you sent, God, you said. Two is because, quite frankly, we just don't want to be hurt. And so yeah. it's easier to say, like God, you just did it, which sometimes sets expectations that. Marriage is the most challenging thing. It's more challenging than you could ever believe, but it's more beautiful than you could ever imagine. 
And I think that we don't give enough of the beauty and we also understate the challenge. And so I wanted to make sure I said that before we moved on, because I think that we sometimes we overstate the one, the mythical, because we don't want to deal with the real reality of the weight and responsibility that comes with our decision. And we're scared of failing. So it's easier, yeah. it's easier to, to make God the scapegoat of our decision. Um, I, but I, I yeah. I, because but I, we do. A lot of, there's a lot of fear surrounding finding the, your person. There's a lot of fear. Yeah. There's fear of rejection. There's fear of like, okay, I chose wrong last time. I'm, I was heartbroken last time. I know I've experienced that personally. And it makes you almost question whether or yeah. not you have the capacity to choose. And so yeah. it's easier to just say, Lord, drop them out the sky. Right. Just drop them out the sky because I don't have to do anything. And then I can be able to say what's from you. But even then, here's the thing. Even if the Lord drops them out the sky, I still have to vet them. <laughs> you know people get words of confirmation, prophes prophesied words about being husbands and wives. Listen, if you didn't go through this and we not in alignment, <laughs> then the prophecy, yeah. I don't know who Sue said, who told you about the prophecy. OK, the prophecy should be questionable. Okay, yeah. so so I love that. Okay, let's switch. I, I don't, oh, go ahead, go ahead. Go I don't ahead. want to lose your second question. Your question was a really amazing around the second part. I think sometimes we conflate the two to mean that if you're not dating, then you're sitting around doing hot nothing, right? <laughs> um, what I've signed sometimes is that you could become a professional dater, mm. and you 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 essentially you you re, you you practice. Practice doesn't make perfect. You know, like practice just makes like like consistent. <laughs> Like, you know, and so I think one of the things that I, I sometimes say, I sometimes see when I'm dating, 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 but I'm like, how will you ever know that that didn't work out because you were unfocused and your mind was split and your attention was split and you never really gave it everything, the attention that it deserved. And so now self-fulfilling prophecy, he's feeling like you, you're, you're not focused or you got something else going on. So he's not giving you the energy that he, of interest because no guy wants, I'm not going to chase somebody who don't want to be caught. And so if it seems like sometimes guys, many uh, guys in my, that, that I even disciple, they'd be like, yo, you see when with maturity, often a woman just don't, doesn't want to waste time. <laughs> she don't want to waste no time. So sometimes we see a, somebody jumping around with all these dating as a sign of immaturity or that she's out there and a mm -hmm. cat will write you off. And you were just like, oh, I'm just out here seeing what's out there. He's like, you seem unfocused. Mm -hmm. Right. And so it doesn't mean staying at home. It means that when you have somebody giving your attention they, if they've actually crossed the threshold of dating them, give them the full attention. So, you know, when I close this door, it's done. Now I'm on to the next person. It takes faith to do that. Oh, OK. OK. Real quick. Real quick. What does that look like from a from a listen, brother, I, I, you are you are educated. You are an attractive young man, as the old folks say. <laughs> You are spiritually inclined, right? You're well-rounded, right? So for you in particular, right? The type of guy that you are, what does it look like for a woman to show effort when dating? Give me mm. like a practical, give me like a practical thing that she can do that's not like throwing herself on the mercy seat, but still is like very intentionally like I really... And, and engaged here. Candid, you're such a Bible nerd. Uh, she said, mercy seat, be my seat for some of those in the back. <laughs> <laughs> I, I appreciate you, sis. Um, communicating uh, vulnerability is keen. And I know this is something like that, but like showing genuine interest, meaning by words, consistency, meaning that you're not, you don't fall off the earth. You know, oh, I'm sorry, I was so busy, right? Because you could actually really be busy, but either either one, the guy has to trust, right, that you're not just that you had you're caught up with other some other guys, or it may communicate that you don't even have space for him, right? And so he's not going to want to find you know be in a relationship with a woman that he can't have spend time with, right? Especially depending on the type of guy you're talking about, right? And so I think like being like being consistent, available, and showing that you actually generally have interest in him. I think is really, really, really important. And I think communicating that when you, when you, when he reaches out to you, you reach back that you're willing to at least like, you know, a, 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 so that, I think that's really important. I think two, um, uh, affirmation, again, this is not no love language stuff, just, but again, give him something. I believe in men being assertive and proactive. Uh, I'm part, I'm, a, I'm of that school, right? So that they pursue, but at least let him know that he could be safe. 
right? So just saying like, hey, you know, I'm interested or, oh, I had a really good time or just communicating that as much as possible. I, I would say as well, sometimes I think we're in this world of games where people play games. I'm so, I, I think I've been grown since 21. Like, I don't like the games of like, I ain't going to text him first. Blah, blah, blah. Like, don't play that game because oh. you lose that game, right? Where, where so like, actually like, some don't feel bad. I'm like reaching out in the more uh, re reaching out, saying hello, saying hello, or hey, I thought about you. I really had a good time. So I think just your communication of how you're feeling at a high level, mm -hmm. right, and showing like you actually are interested in him, right. Yeah. And I think use language of reverence. I think, for example, when a woman's into a man, it's, it comes through in a language of reverence and respect. I think women are made for that for their husbands. Right. And so if there's a reverence of like, wow, I really admire and you communicate that to him, I think that unlocks something in a man of like, mm -hmm. oh, wow, that's wife. That's wife talk because she's talking about reverence. Men don't want to be loved. We want to be respected. And yeah. so I think when you get re reverence language of like, oh, you did a great or like, oh, you spoke so well or I really admire you. Like when you did. But whoo. <laughs> <laughs> hey. that's, you like, that's like the Esther language, huh? If it pleases the king. Okay. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and and likewise, as a woman, like a man who who who, who the, the consideration, the love, right? I think that that is so that I think that's so keen in terms of his language, his reliability, his self. So I'll give you an example. I have three sisters, right? I've been the protective brother forever, right? Like I was I was I was throwing them hands when I was younger for my sisters. And I remember my sister, my youngest sister, stayed with me in Harlem before she found a place. She moved back from China, was staying with me, and there's there's this guy that she was interested in. And they were dating. And one time she left my place, my Harlem place. She was like, oh, I'm like, where are you going? She was like, I'm going down to, uh, to you know, you know, this guy. She was trying to be, you know, I was going to say, oh, you're talking to somebody. But I said, you know, I think it was a little bit late in that. I was like, it was kind of late. I was like, did he send anything? Did he, you know, like, it's kind of late for you to be on the subway. Well, like, did what did he say about that? He, he was like, no, he just said, come by. And already I kind of was a, it was an X, it was a red thing for me. Mm -hmm. Because I said it was like you need you don't do you consider this woman? Mm -hmm. And God says again, if I don't consider your wife, he will not listen to your prayer. So I said, like, no, nah, that's not your husband. Like, he's that. So I can imagine as a woman, if a guy's not considerate, that's an ant. Eh. If a woman yeah. isn't showing reverence early, that's an ant. Eh. Mm, I love <laughs> that. I love just vocal vocal affirmation, um, full engagement, full attention. I think that that's wonderful. And I think that that can be, someone had a question, is there a difference between positioning oneself and chasing? I really do think um, that as a woman, sometimes it is hard to find the line between, because how we're raised in church, it's like very conservative at times, right? Um, but I think that that helps to, that vulnerability piece is huge, especially for, <laughs> especially for uh, us with a little more melanin. <laughs> um, vulnerability piece that can feel a little uncomfortable initially, but I do think that we can indulge better there and just like be supportive of of men. I do think I think now in my maturity, I have a deeper understanding of maybe the difficulties or challenges that men can face. That I, I don't think that I was uh, necessarily privy to when I was younger. Uh, mm -hmm. Just my experiences. And then I think a lot of it has to do with the devil and how he mm. tries to build a chasm between men and women. Obviously, he would attack that, right, if we're supposed to be in unity in marriage. And so I think a lot of what I experienced was perversity. Mm. A lot of perversity for men, mm. um, a lot of uh, unreliability, not really mm. I didn't really see dependable men growing up. I mean, I had male um, family members, but it just wasn't it was shaky ground everywhere. Yeah. And um, so I think, you know, as you kind of grow and you kind of get familiar with God's word and you get good friendships, right? Because I love, that's why I love having these conversations because then I can talk to my brother about what brothers experience. I don't yeah. honestly know as a single woman, everything that men experience and I think vice versa. So this is super helpful. And I think that that can be the difference between building a lasting con uh, atmosphere where you can't, I'm sorry, not a lasting and an environment where you can connect to create a lasting relationship. So I love that. I really, really quickly, cause we don't have very much time. I want us to jump oh. into. Oh. <laughs> we're moving, we're moving fast. 
guys, but we got to make this brief because the first of all, the people need to, they need to ask for more. We'll come back if y'all want more. Okay. But we need to make it brief. So I want us to jump into this conversation about um, sex because for me, I, I, I'm a purity coach. I love kind of uh, giving people the benefits of an abstinent life. I think that there is a lot of benefits of it. And so, but I want your opinion because it can be a challenging thing um, moving from singleness into marriage. There's so many things happening within you, right? It's like, especially if you're trying to live as, as a Christian and a believer and even trying to indulge anywhere in the area of abstinence, it could be a slippery slope. And also you don't know exactly what to expect in marriage when it comes to that aspect of your life. So from your perspective, a lot of people are concerned about things like sexual chemistry. A lot of people are concerned about mm -hmm. um, like not trying it before you buy it. Right. And so mm -hmm. what is your perspective on that as a person who has counseled a lot of couples and then, you know, just from your own personal experience, what have you learned when it comes to making that transition? What has been helpful in maintaining yourself and then delving into the sexual aspect of marriage fully? Like, is there a, is there some strategy around that, um, that we should keep in mind when we're considering what that looks like in marriage? Yeah. I mean, it's heartbreak. It's heavy when I hear that. I mean, I think my journey has been a, a, as someone who, um, want to live purely for a long time and I fell and, um, you know, made, I made a decision to have sex, uh, when I wanted to wait to marriage. And, you know, it took me on a journey. I think for the most part, I, I looked to maintain my purity as much as possible, but I, but I, but I, I, I've fallen. What, so I have a lot of compassion for that. But, but I think one is, like, what does God say about it? And I think that this is the thing that I think that tr even in the kingdom, we get wrong. Marriage is like, um, sex has been made to seem like it's the dessert and not the entree. Mm. And that it's it's something that is for good behavior. And I'm talking for either or, right? That this is this piece. But you know, when you look at just even Corinthians, first Corinthians seven, it's a duty. Mm. Right. It's like breathing. It's like oxygen for your relationship. It's a unification, as my sister shared on the panel. It's about it's, it's part of the reproduction and it's about unity. It's a ceremony, it's almost a sacrament of like I've often counseled couples that many times when they talk about strategies before having difficult conversations one of the strategies many couples that uh, that counsel do and many couples have done uh, even wisdom is that many of them have sex before they have difficult conversations because wow. it reaffirms to them that they're on the same team there's something that happens after sex clearly we've understood the extreme of it to say you make poor decisions like I never thought I would do this right like what you've connected yourself to this person that what well, it kind of it blurs your mind but mm -hmm. actually that blurring, right? Not only the oxytocin of forgetting when you have a kid and the pain of it, or the oxytocin and the connection and the bonding mechanism that you have with a wife or with a husband is this reality of like, man, it reminds me supernaturally that we're one and certain things aren't that important. Like, mm -hmm. you know, and so you have a different conversation after you have sex versus when you don't have sex. Mm -hmm. And so I think that quite frankly, it's been perverted in a way, number one, we view it as this Oh, if I feel happy, I feel good. Or if I did something well, no, 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 no. You have to view it like this is gasoline. This is oxygen, right? And I think redeeming our biblical view of that's one. I think two, giving yourself grace. I think on one hand, we have to give a, a clearer picture of the potential cost. I've had couples, situations where, and, and this is, I need to say this because I think it's going to be helpful to people to understand what's at stake where a couple a person has had dreams has seen their spouse having dreams calling another person's name mm -hmm. while they're sleeping wow tell me what type of trauma that does to your partner because of decisions you made beforehand there's grace but if you don't understand the potential impact or the fact is is that now you're you, you in order for you to feel aroused you're thinking about someone else you can't unsee things no matter how many people tell you and act like it doesn't exist you can't unsee it Mm -hmm. And so for the people who are on the other side saying, I need to test it out for, for your spouse's sake and your marriage sake, just know that that's at stake. And I just want you to make an informed decision aside from the potential disease and all that. But I'm not trying to spook you. The other side of it is that like, but look at what you get on the other side. It's just like, man, I get this opportunity to reconnect in a way that binds me to someone that no one else in the world or less people know have, can ever lay claim to. Right. And I think that's part of the beauty of that. And so one, give yourself grace. We have this in the, even in the book, we talk about um, the conversation around sex and how early you want to have that. 
Mm -hmm. And I think that's important about what you like, what you're like. And I would say take that with a kind of a clean slate because no one wants to hear, well, I like that. Well, how do you know you like that? Right. Right. And I think that's part. And this is why we have to have a real conversation. So part of the reason I enjoy had, talking about sex in the, the conversations for marriage prep is that you have to do a lot of unlearning. And a lot of people are br have brought not only the, the, the memories, they brought associations to sex um, that I think are not helpful for flourishing. And I think the, the last thing I'll say is that um, I love roller coasters. <laughs> I love them. You know what I mean? And my um, my wife, she loves roller coasters. And I've been to like almost every Six Flags. But it's different when I go to the Six Flags with her. It's mm. a different experience because we're doing it for the first time together. Come on. I think there's 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 I think there's this something to be said about this is an opportunity for you to create new, right? When is this you know, you can't have resurrection unless you have death. And the Come resurrection on. of something new that could be far better than something you ever experienced, you'll never know the end of the story until Jesus comes back. So the fact is I'm going to get married to someone and we're going to rediscover and create something I've never experienced before. Mm -hmm. Because we're doing it together, that's the difference of sex in marriage. Is that it's because y'all are doing it and no one else. And it's your thing to create. And the, to the extent that you could give yourself grace in that, which is why it's not about performance. It's a fact, the fact that, wow, this woman has been willing to give herself fully to me in the most vulnerable way. I don't care. You're not going to look at your kid when they give you a crayon and they, and, they, and they came from kindergarten. And they say, this is a picture. You say, oh, this is not me. You'd be like, thank you so much for doing that for me. That's what sex should be, right? It should mm. be. Thank you for even being willing to put your life on the line to connect with me in the most intimate way possible. That's sexy. That brings you to another. That's another level of connection that I pray we all have in our life. Yes. Well, look, look I didn't took notes about the how to. So I hope. Yeah, we all going to I declare and decree. We will all have that. Um, I love that so much. I think the aspect of being completely uncovered in that way um is like the ultimate vulnerability right mm -hmm. and so part of the reason why i like so much what you said about unlearning the unlearning part is because um when we come into christ it's like we're made completely new mm -hmm. and we all know that marriage mirrors christ's deep seated love for us right um, we are his bride. We are his church. Right. Mm. And so he literally is like, come as you are. Mm. Right? And so a lot of us really don't make these connections. We think making connections between spirituality and sexuality is, is blasphemous, but it's actually the opposite. It is so much like God mm. to declare like a physical aspect of what he created based on pleasure. Right. Mm. Because it's such, a, it's such an interesting way of showing himself throughout the earth in the confines of such a safe space as marriage. And so mm. I love the fact that we can be completely un uncovered before God and we can be completely uncovered before who he gave us to further serve him, right? Because that is mm. the ultimate purpose of marriage. And so it makes you think about the idea of sex differently, even if you're not Listen, you don't want to be the most holiest person in the world, right? Just from a practical aspect of of dysfunction in the world, <laughs> you can say like, this is something that should be stewarded, right? This is something that should be stewarded. And so um, I do really, really love this concept of going into marriage and becoming completely new and just mm. experiencing that ultimate renewal. And speaking of that, I have to ask you this question before we end. Okay. Was there something you specifically, um, and I like getting, I like getting the, the authentic raw truth. Was there something you specifically was like, that's not going to work. That, that's been working for me in singleness. When I go into this marriage, that's probably going to have to get left at the door. Was there anything, had you, had you done the work where you didn't experience that? Or was it like, yeah, I know for a fact that this part of me, this behavior, this characteristic, or even just this mindset is probably not going to serve me in marriage, even though I've gotten away with it in singleness. Oh, man. I was saying this the other week, but uh, I was saying this over the past couple of months. I thought I was a great steward of my time. Mm. I thought I was. 
I think marriage has caught me, has humbled me even more to recognize that there's a lot at stake with my time. Like how I spend my time, the things I say yes to, the thing I say no to, how I actually are, I'm dutiful in my time. So I'm freed up for her, how I think about our future in my time. Yo, you, I think there's a lot of wasted time in singleness. Mm. I'm not saying everybody's single, but there's a lot of time because you're not necessarily, there's not a dependent. There's not somebody there who's accounting for I, you're coming back at this time. We wow. plan to do this. You need to save because we need to go out to this country because that's where my such and such is getting married. You, when you just go to, I always just say it, it's like, yo, <laughs> when I was running track full time and I were like, you have on your stipend and stuff like that. I'm like, I can survive on tuna fish and eggs and be fine. Right. <laughs> right. Now you have somebody else in the house. You know what I'm saying? It's like, we can't handle like, I was prom queen situation happening in my house with my wife. Like, and so I think the reality is it's like, man, I cannot be wasteful with my time. I mm -hmm. never was supposed to be that. I think I thought I was really good at it, but now, ooh, I think that is not something you can get away with, just being flippant with your time. Uh, that is such, uh, that takes a lot of pride before Ooh. God and a lot of pride uh, before your significant other. And um, I don't want that fall. That is so good. You know, it took me a while to get that because I was like twiddling my thumbs, thinking like, okay, I can't wait for the Lord to bring my partner. Um, and I think for a while in my life, I was more so focused on that as opposed to stewarding my time well for when the, the appointed time came. And so more recently, though, I've been looking up like <laughs> I've been br breathing through these hours. I'm, I'm doing good. You know what I mean? As opposed to before, it was like, dang, like I wish I could do X and I wish I could do Y. And I think that that it's um, it's. People say this and it used to bother me, like the cliche of like, just busy yourself doing X and Y and Z. And I was like, listen, ma'am, I can't get no busier. OK, but <laughs> now I'm thinking about it in such a more mature way as far as the time really is short. Right. And so it's helpful to be able to make good use of it and make even better use of it when you get married because now there's two people stewarding their time excellently um, and then they can find alignment there. So I really, really love that so much. I want you guys to follow Lawrence on Instagram. Um, it's just at um, his last name, A-D-J-A-H um, underscore L. I want you guys to follow him. There's lots of good things, um, events and things that he's a part of, in addition to visiting his website. And you can get the book. Uh, my homegirl, Tasha, shout out to Tasha. She is engaged. She said, know. look, I added that to my registry. <laughs> she, said, <laughs> I added the book to my, she said, I added the book to my bridal registry. I love it. No, it is so important. Therapy and counseling, good counselors is so important. And we have to take this seriously um, because it is serious and it's sacred. Right. Mm. And so um, I'm super excited for all that you are going to accomplish through your family now that the Lord has brought you into um, his promise of a new season in that way. Brother Aja, I love that for you. And mm. I am super happy about everyone who has joined. And like you said at the beginning, at the offset, which was so wise, that if you desire marriage, if you desire family, like it's it's good. It's good to desire that. It's okay to desire that. And you're heard and you are acknowledged, right? And, and, and there's no dysfunction. We don't need to send you to deliverance because you want to get married, right? Or because you, you value marriage. We just want to make sure that we don't make it an idol. And so um, I really like just to finalize the conversation. Um, I love the fact that um, when you find a problem or an area where there is a void, you create the solution. Mm -hmm. And I think that this book is a solution, guys. So this is why I really want you to get it. Because I think Brother Lawrence has created a solution um, to something that he saw a gap in. And he does one-on-one. -on -one, you do one-on-one -on -one services. You've done counseling and things like that, which is great for the added guidance of kind of going through things. But I think that this is like a really good area for balance when it comes to marriage and singleness and us saying marriage is wonderful. It is all of the things that's like sitting next to lilies and experience and sipping in wat the waters, the still waters and, and, you know, indulging in the breasts of our partner, like Song of Solomon says, right? 
but also the sobering aspect of this is also the Garden of Gethsemane as well as the Garden of Eden, right? And if I'm going to get married, there's a responsibility there to be mm. a good wife or to be a mm. good husband to my partner, mm. because that is what we are signing up for. That's what we are aligning. And furthermore, there is children to consider. Even if not your own biological children, there is a community of children around you in your church, um, your neighbors. I, I, I really quickly, I had a, there's a neighbor of mine. There's two children. One's around seven, one's around 12 and their mother passed away. So I met them on their first, the first day that they had moved in and I saw the uh, little boy and he was walking around the apartment and he was looking for something and he was alone. And so he, I stopped him. I said, are you okay? And um, he said, yeah, I'm fine. I'm looking for the, we have like golf courses, like a golf thing area in our apartment building or whatever, our community. And so I was like, okay, let me show you where it is. And I walked him down there. But this is the thing. This is why the safety of community is needed because he could have met anybody. He's seven. Could have met anybody trying to walk outside to go somewhere. You know, understand what I'm saying? And so even if you're not a mother, you are you are called to mother somebody, called to mother something, some someone in your community. Even if you're not a father yet, you are called to be a father like your heavenly father to someone. You're called to be a brother and a sister. And so family is super duper important. What would you say to someone who is delayed in the process of experiencing family? I think that's a good place for us to end. Mm. Do you have encouragement for the person who is like, I really desire family. I know that it's mm -hmm. good. I feel balanced. I feel like I'm ready for it. I don't know that the Lord sent it. I don't want to go out, you know, and try to get it on my own or do things that are com compromising in order to, to have it. Do you have anything that you can offer to that person who wants to get this book and do all of the things in it? Yeah. I'd like to go to the end of the story. Um, what you're desiring is is good and it is holy. It is beautiful. You know, we recognize that we all want to have a perfect relationship with God. We do in Christ. But every single day we read our Bibles, we pray, we lay down, we get counsel, we get covering, we get rebuke. We're in this process of like perfecting, even though we're perfected. I, 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 I would just invite you to also view your journey in relationship the same way. To say that ultimately, my you know the the ultimate husband, the, the ultimate bride, that's been reconciled. It is finished. But every single day, I want to get to the end of the road, like you know, like I, I finished the race. I kept the faith, like Paul did, and I look back and I said, I could live with that, meaning that I've done everything I could on this side to give my best to this. That I wasn't fearful. That I didn't hold back. I think you want to look at the end of your story and say, did I do everything within my power where at the end I could have peace no matter what? Mm -hmm. And this is why I think, and we don't sit down and say I'm saved and we just sit down. Like we do work every single day. I think transforming your mind to say, if I can go to the end and do something every day, whether it's this book or whether it's not the book, or whether it's just prayer or whether it's actually saying yes to that person that you didn't think you aligned with, but you're like, you know what? We can have a God glorifying relationship and God's with me. I just, I truly, truly, truly believe give it where you have no regrets at the end, where you could say, I could live with that. And I think if more than anything else, if you kind of take that, um, I think it, you would do well. Your life would, I think, I think you would be really, really pleased um, with uh, the life uh, that you you have. Um, I, I just want to say this to you, Kendon. I thank God for you. This ministry is so needed. Um, I get really concerned and uh, encouraged when I look at what's out there and I look at how um, I think the false measures of encouragement and affirmation and going from the wrong source. Or there are people who are who are really want to be pure, who want to seek marriage the right way and are not really encouraged to do it the right way or the godly way. I'm thankful for your truth and your grace. I'm thankful that you are prayerful over this community It's a community of prayer of intention, uh, that you take them around to the ends of the earth. I just wanna encourage you, I pray the same. I have this dream of believing that we will start a community of like in, uh, arranged marriages. I believe our community needs it, uh, but I believe that you're part of the generation's call to like really, really have us have a redeemed view of relationships, not only with God, but with each other. So um, again, everyone have hope. 
get to the end where you can say, I could live with that, do everything you can every single day to grow in this area of seeking or receiving a relationship. And then ultimately, as you're on this journey, continue to hold on to communities like this, continue to sow into communities like this, and continue to pray for people who lead communities like this. And so, um, Heavenly Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I thank you for Candon, my sister, your daughter. I thank you, Father God, that she belongs to you. Father God, I'm praying um, in faith, Lord, that um, you will continue to fill her up He'll fill her cup and it will overrun it. And that all a God who hear it of it will, will receive the touching of that anointing oil that falls from her head. Lord, I pray that uh, you ultimately, uh, God, would uh, give her a relationship that glorifies you. I, I pray you continue to build this community up so that brothers and sisters, particularly our sisters, do not feel alone in their journey of purity uh, to honor you. And Lord, I thank you for this time and space that you've given us, uh, God, just to talk about you, to seek you, and to be our best um, uh, Father God, and, and award us who needs it. Lord, we thank you. We love you. Give you all the praise. In Jesus' righteous holy name, amen and amen. Amen. Throw some amens in the chat. Yes, thank you so mm -hmm. much. I really appreciate that word of edification and the same words of edification that I receive. I am giving back to everybody on this. If you are, you are in a season where you desire it, I love the fact that we can be live the best life that we have the capacity to live and we live a good one nowadays we have a lot of opportunities to create impact and then we also have the hope that is in our savior that he will perform the promises on our behalf so i feel encouraged i don't know about y'all but i feel great um this was a, a, a an amazing enlightening discussion i just want to tell you guys uh you need this. You need, first of all, you need, some of y'all need to go to therapy. <laughs> and second of all, a lot of y'all need to go to therapy. And second of all, I was like, listen, I started there. I started one-on-one -on -one therapy and I said, oh yeah, I needed to get my, <laughs> um, you need to go to therapy. One, you, some of y'all need a purity coach. So go, on, go ahead and go on over to yourpuritycoach.com and send me a message. Okay. Um, and so we can just talk about strategy around what the Lord told us to do. It don't have to be deep. And then I want you to get this book, The 100 Marriage Decisions and Declarations You Need to Make Before Getting Married by my brother Lawrence. Okay, I want you to go to his website and get this book. And I want you to follow him on Instagram because there are a lot of people that you could listen to and there are not a lot of people that you should listen to. <laughs> okay, so you need to have some sharp iron sharpens iron. Okay. And we need to listen to people who have wisdom. Okay. And this is a person that I can vouch for has some wisdom. And so I want you to make sure that you keep up and that you are family planning, even as single. And if you are married, God bless you. We love you. We are so happy for you. And it is a mandate that us in our singleness, we need to pray for you and for your families to be established. But I want you to take this book if you look through it, if you haven't made these declarations and say, like, how can I align? How can we be aligned and how can we align our family better being one unified person? Right. And spirit um, in our marriage. And so um, thank you so much for the Aja. We'll have to have you back and maybe we'll have your beautiful wife too and we'll find out a little bit more than because you know i'm nosy or whatever so i'll be having questions or whatever but um mm -hmm. on behalf of the people um but please send her our love and um we're gonna end with a just a really quick word of prayer over everyone on the call thank you guys i see y'all in the comments y'all have party hats and clapping and amens and amens if you know a person who is about to get married you can gift them the book even if you don't necessarily um, feel in the right space for you to use it right now, okay? Because I think that everyone should go through these things and to have some wise counsel, all right? We're going to end um, on prayer. Um, if you are not saved, if you do not know the wonderful first love, then I want you to just simply say, Lord, if you desire to accept him, you want to believe in him, you want to know him as you've heard us kind of discuss him and sprinkle him into the conversation, I want you to give you an opportunity to accept him, even though this is alive and this is all fun. Um, this is a life changing decision that it was one of the best that I ever made. And it improved the quality of my life so much. And I would not turn back. You could not tell me anything that would make me turn back, do anything to me that would turn back, that would make me turn back. And so if you feel led to, to accept Jesus into your life, 
now's your moment, man. You can do that, right? Just say like, Lord Jesus, I believe in you. I believe you died for me and you rose for me again on the third day. I accept you as Lord of my life. Lead me, guide me. I accept your word as truth. Mm. And I accept your mandate um, to identify with my father in heaven who made me and created me for more than I've been experiencing. And mm. we will support you as your family if you need Anything, please send me a DM. I'll be happy to pray with you or to go over the basics of salvation uh, because the Lord is our first love. He loves us more than anyone. And so we just want to start there as the foundational principle of relationship goals. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so you are saved. You are set free. You are delivered. You don't need to be in no church. You don't need to be in front of the cross. Okay. You can do a, a physical cross. You are in front of a your savior and he accepts you. All right. And then I want to just pray for everyone on here really quick as we close. And I thank you once again for your investment and sacrifice of time, brother Aja, because you are a sought after individual and you willingly and excitedly accepted this invitation to be here with us. And so, um, Lord, thank you so much, um, for my brother Lawrence and for his wife. And I pray that their home would be established so that no, um, nothing that prevails against your will will shake oh, them hallelujah. House in the name of Jesus. And so oh, will you prosper them in health. Will you prosper them in unification? Will you prosper their families and will you prosper their marriage? And will they create uh, impact in the kingdom that they never could have imagined mm. with their testimony with their life, with uh, their love um, and with their gifts to the community around them? And will they be blessed and edified all the more for doing so? Mm -hmm. Lord, thank you for my brothers and sisters who tuned into yes. this live, who will watch this yes. live, who care about them. You love them, you see them, and you have so much in store for them. Um, we just rebuke any lies that the enemy has told them about oh, what they yeah. have. We rebuke any um, dysfunction, any yes. sexual version that has uh, come upon them and is trying to hold on to them. Lord, we thank you for the marriages that you're establishing. Even now, we thank you for the relationships that will mm. come into alignment with your will, though they have been out of alignment with it, God. We pray, God, for the individual desire to serve you being more important than the desire to be connected romantically to another person. Mm -hmm. and because our motives are pure and because we are trying to honor you with our obedience, Lord, that you will meet our needs, yes, that you will Lord. give us the desires of our hearts and that you will speak to us and give us wisdom on which way to turn. Thank you for everyone under the sound of my voice that will see this, will view this, Lord. I just pray that you give them peace. Lord, let them be full of love as we celebrate this holiday, God. Let them be full of peace, full of restfulness, um, full of hopefulness, God, as they are excited about their future. Um, we say all these things in your son Jesus' name. In Jesus' amen. name. Amen. And yes. Amen. amen. Hallelujah. Okay. I love, love, love all of you. Thank you, Brother Lawrence. You're amazing. We'll have another discussion because we got to talk about that arranged marriage. We got to talk about that. That's going to be part two. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I really believe in that. Um, and I want the people to, to chime in. And so um, I will talk to you soon and bye talk everyone on the live. Let us know if you have any questions, comments, concerns, hit a comment, tag somebody, tell them you got to watch this and pray for your future marriage or your current marriage. Um, and we'll see you next time. You have anything you want to say? God bless you. Thank you. Thank you again, Candon. Okay. Bye. Hello.